Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our rear seating segment. So in this video, we're gonna go over the uh, rear wraparounds and bottom seat cushions and a little bit different approach in how to build those and get those fitted and installed. But first we're gonna take a look at our rear seating wraparounds. So my car did not come equipped with these rear wraparounds, so I'm not gonna install them uh, in our project here, but I will show you how to install them and get them put into place. And then also we'll take a look at a page out of the um, Guide to Authenticity from Dr. Brett Johnson. So this is the book I'm using here to sort out some of the questionable details. This is written by Dr. Brett Johnson. Um, and then here are some 65 through 66, 911. You can see the seat wraparounds there, uh, but they did not show up here. So depending on your car, uh, 911, 912, and the uh, production number, is going to really depend whether your car came equipped with those or not. So if you have a set of these ordered out or uh, have made up for you, there's going to be a left and a right. Um, they're patterned, so there's only one way they can fit in there and be correct. And so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to squish it in to the corners as uh, tight as I can get it seated and as tight to the bottom and this back edge here as possible. They can't be pushed in here fairly tight. And what I would do um, on the back side here is you got carpet to carpet. What I would do, I would just contact cement the back side of our vinyl here and then stick it down um, all the way around in the uh, lower section here. Um, and then I would just make relief cuts in this area here, just pressing it right down as low as we can get it, making sure everything's seated. And then I would stick it right there. Okay, so moving on to our lower seat cushions and what we're gonna do to get these fit in here and uh, tailor to exactly the sizes going on around it. So our original OEM look is actually a fairly low profile seat that sits in just below this lip here and there's very little front edge. I've seen quite a few different ways uh, these seats have been restored in various cars and uh, some of them look really really nice. Some of them are fairly loose in their uh, interpretation and I'm not really sure whether uh, all the uh, restorations on these are accurate or would have been uh, matching an OEM look. So what we're going to try and do on this one, we're going to try to match the uh, OEM look that came with the car, although we could go thicker and uh, that wouldn't be a bad choice, but uh, I'm going to just try and maintain OEM appearance. I'm going to try and put a real nice stretch on there and then also uh, we're trying to pad it up to where we have just enough padding in there to pull this off. Uh, this is an area you can definitely over pad and over build that front edge, but um, what I think we need here is we're going to need some kind of a wooden frame to uh, to house everything in, stretch it over, and staple to. We had really good luck by stapling off our seat backs here. I'm going to take that same principle and carry it down to our seat cushions and see if we can make that work. So I have already made up both the uh, left and right seat frames according to uh, a template that I have made from the existing seats. So you can see here our original left seat here doesn't really fit all that great in our area here, although uh, it's probably not going to fit that great because I've reshaped this a little bit according to uh, the foams that I've used under there. It's not going to really seat back in there and be exact anyways. Uh, but this is the look here that I'm trying to get at, which is this front edge here. I really don't want to get too thick with that. I've seen these as much as inch and a half to two inches thick on here. Um, I just want to get an inset look there if I can get it and then also uh, try and fit and tailor the edge as best I can. I think the best way to do that is gonna be using a wooden frame. Um, so we're gonna have to come to a shape that's gonna be uh, fairly exact. So let's take a look and see how I got a template to make that up. So if we were just to trace off our original seat patterns, we really wouldn't be uh, accurate or correct for what's going on in here. You see a lot of this has been uh, kind of deformed over time here anyways. So what I'm trying to do is just get it back and as tight to that edge as possible. Uh, and the best way to do that is get up to this elevation. And then from that height, we want to make a new template using some aluminum foil sitting on top of the seat cushion. You can see there, we're real tight now to everything going on around it. I pull this away, there's quite a gap down there. So you can't really make the template up uh, from this position here because as you go down, everything changes. See how that's overhanging there? So you really gotta do it from the right height. And as you move up and down, everything's gonna change. And then looking at the disgusting bottom 
of the uh, the seat bottom here. Um, a little bit weathered over time there, but basically what we're trying to show you here is the shape and the angles that we're going to need to make with our new seat frame. So what I'm trying to mimic now is the angle, the front edge, back, and then also the back edge. And a little bit taller there, a little bit taller rise to it. Just like the, uh, the back there. So we're trying to emulate the same pattern only a more fitted pattern to the opening. And uh, you just kind of have to hand grind that in. I used a four inch grinder with an 80 grit pad and uh, played with it. Took a couple hours per side to get one of these knocked out. Uh, a lot of going back and forth to make sure it's not too big and not too small. But uh, if you play with it long enough, then you pretty much get there. Okay, so I'm kind of walking into no man's land here. Let me take one of these and uh, slowly put it together trying various thickness foams. Once I got something I think that'll work. Let's take a look at it and then go through the other one step by step. Well I think we got something that's definitely going to work so let's take a look at the finished fit here. We're actually tucked in fairly tight all the way around and even our front edge is pretty much landing where I want it to land which is just behind that lip and back from the front edge and that's about the same uh, thickness build up in profile as our original and then flipping it over so what we're using on the bottom here we're using some burlap I'm using uh, extra thickness and foam core in the center only and then dropping down uh, in this area here we'll take a look at that detail here in a second but basically just uh, tightening it up real tight with all our staples to keep everything as flush as possible and this bottom here basically is going to give us our OEM look and profile. That's going to be the profile on the outer edge. And then our uh, cushion down here, what I ended up using was the same foam rubber we used in the trunk uh, under the tire. This seemed to work really good uh, for this. And what that's going to do, um, it's going to give us some cushion for the uh, seat to bear down into. And also with the uh, rubberized traction on there, it's going to stop the cushion from slipping around so uh, that thickness right there uh, in conjunction with the other uh, materials seems to be just the right build up and then comparing the finished look with our original all right moving on to the other side let's see if we can do this one more time so after playing with several different materials different thicknesses and foams this is pretty much what I came up with uh, so this hardcore foam we're using for the center here. This is pretty rigid stuff. Um, this measures out at about one inch and our uh, seat bottom frame measures out at about three quarter inch. So that's going to stick down on one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a template first. I'm going to trace off the inside of that middle there. Uh, cut it out, press it in there, and then bring it up flush with the top here uh, to set it, which means it'll stick out on the bottom about one quarter inch. And then next we're pressing it into the frame so that the top is flush with the outer frame. And the inside of our frame here has a rounded edge. Uh, purpose of the rounded edge on the inside is so when you sit on this you don't feel any kind of transition in that area at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a bead of super glue all the way around this and seal it in from the top side first. Uh, that'll create like a weld on our uh, foam. The wood border, uh, give that about an hour to dry, then we'll flip it over and do the bottom side. And while our foam is drying, we're going to press in some aluminum and make up a template for our rubber mat, and then we're noting the top side. So we're taking our template and flipping it upside down, and then we're going to mark it with a sharpie. We have a line all the way around and then what we're going to do because this is going to be the bottom side which is the smallest side of our angle and then we're going to cut a real severe angle leaning basically at a 45 degrees or greater as we pull 
and we're going to do that all the way around. And this will be our finished cut. And then we'll just lay that in place. And that should be plenty good. We may have to trim on it a little bit depending how the other piece fits into it. And also you can adjust by pulling this backwards. Um, you can get a different front edge detail on our finished upholstery. All right, so our top side is dry, plenty strong. That's definitely not going anywhere. And then on the bottom side, you can see we have our quarter inch hanging down here. So what we want to do now is cut that at a bevel all the way around. And that'll be our finished look there. And then we're going to take our super glue and just do the same thing. And we'll just let that guy set up overnight. And then tomorrow we'll come out and wrap it. Okay, so now our foam core is plenty stuck. That's definitely not going anywhere. So now we can go ahead and wrap it, starting with the bottom. So our first layer is just some black material, and that's basically just to black everything out. And then next is going to be a layer of burlap. That's going to do two things for us. It's going to give us a nice OEM look on the bottom. And then also it's going to give us some grip as it bites down into our rubber mat in the seat well. And then once we've covered our bottom, uh, it's really a good idea just to check one last time before we put any more layers on here, just to make sure everything's going to seat. We're sitting right down in the seat well. Uh, all clearances look like they're going to work out. And this front edge here, a uh, little bit of space in there, but that's built in there. So when we wrap over the edge, uh, we're going to add a little bit of material in there and build that up. And then our next layer is going to be a half inch polyester type batting. We're going to pull over the front edge here to build that up. And we're going to be flush on the sides. And then stapled into place, that's going to be our finished look. And before we do our final wrap, what we want to do is we want to check the original seat with our new pattern. And then we want to check the sew patterns to make sure that we have the right overhang on this side and this side and how we're going to do that by centering it up as best we can in the provided material and then we want to take a framing square and square the middle to the front edge there that way when we line up our new template with it we're going to be lining up uh, with the front edge and this guy here will keep us nice and square and as long as we're in the center of those marks it should turn out nice and straight. Okay, so back out in the sun here, just warming things up and making it nice and supple. So I have the other seat sitting next to us here, so I can use that as a reference as to how much I want to be pulling on it. I can overstretch this thing or understretch it, and it's going to give us a little bit different look depending on what I do. So I want to try and match this one as close as possible. And then I have the original out here, so I can keep an eye on uh, which direction the original seams were folded and how everything worked out there. So as long as I keep an eye on those, I'm working through it, we should be okay. And then comparing with our finished one here, what we have to do now is we just have to press down all this that's sticking up here. So we don't really need any more staples to hold this down. Uh, plenty of staples in there for that. So basically what we're doing is we're just stapling it down to iron out and compress all this material here. Otherwise, we're going to have a fitment problem.
Okay, here's our finished look, comparing the two side by side, and our finished bottom look, and then comparing to our original. Okay, let's go put them in and see how they fit. All right, I think we're looking pretty good on this one. I think uh, the only adjustment we really need to make here is going to be on the mat underneath. So I think I need to just take off maybe about a half inch on that front edge there, just so our front can sit down in there a little bit tighter. You can see here it's just up ever so slight and mat in there. Let me trim that and then we'll take a final look. All right, so sitting down in there a little bit better now. And side by side, I think we got a pretty good match. So overall, very happy with the way this back seating has turned out. Real nice kits from Autos International and uh, really not too difficult to put all this together. So on our final close today, I'd just like to mention uh, what we saw here today in this video. This is just one way that you can uh, go about it, putting these bottom seat cushions together. But literally, there's probably a hundred different ways and uh, many, many different materials you could use to get to the same result. Um, how you go about it uh, is really what you're comfortable with. In my case, I really like the way the staples draw everything up nice and tight and give us a nice rigid frame to keep the shape for years to come. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.